Mark Milton for Inside Sports. It is about 45 minutes until Game 7 of the 2013 NBA Finals between the San Antonio Spurs and the Miami Heat. And excitement and anticipation are at Super Bowl pitch. And it should be. And I just want to give some thoughts on Game 7s. Giants had one against the Cardinals in last year's National League Championship Series. I don't think Sports Center had quite the the uh, fanfare that this game has. Um, but this also does involve truly an icon that transcends the sport, LeBron James, and his team, the Miami Heat, with established champion Dwayne Wade. Story goes on and on. You have the Spurs, who don't make mistakes, who are winners themselves who are an example for the NBA themselves. When this series started, San Antonio had had nine days off. Miami had had two. They beat Indiana in Game 7 of the Eastern Conference Finals and basically had as much rest in between games as they would at any point during the season. That, I thought, would give a huge advantage to the Heat going into the start of the series. I did not think that the Spurs would win either games one or two. I didn't think they would get swept, but I didn't think that they would win either games one or two. I thought game one, they might lose by, say, 15, shake off the rust, come back, make it a close one in game two, go back to, my, to San Antonio, make it a series. Instead, what do the Spurs do? They come out and they win game one, which was a huge statement to me. That let me know that the Heat were in for a fight, and they might lose that fight. Then we get this weird back and forth blowout phenomenon, including, I believe, a record 36 points in Game 3. People are talking about legacies being etched in stone tonight. That, I think, is just a symptom of the ever-shrinking attention span. Before the game, there will be none bigger afterward. And three weeks later, we can't even remember certain important facts that affected the outcome of this game. There's football coming. Remember Ray Lewis? Oh my God, is he the best ever? Well, there was no one there really to answer the question, yes. But let me talk about legacy for a sec. Legacy is nothing for the short attention span to assign. Time is. A legacy is like you turn in a test or some other measure of where you're at in a class or some other course and you turn it in, the teacher lauds it with praise as one of the best ever, but the final grade is dynamic and will be assessed over time as it contrasts itself against the input of subsequent peers. LeBron James is the best basketball player ever. And that statement holds true despite the fact that he has not won as many championships or scored as many points or made as many finals appearances as the greats. Kareem, Wilt, Russell, Jordan, Kobe, Bird, Magic. He's the best ever. And he hasn't achieved what the others have achieved. It's almost like that ad with Kobe and King James with the puppets a few years back. Kobe, have you seen my three championship rings? Three very large, shiny, gold championship rings. Let me write the end of that now. LeBron says over from the wall, uh, you know, I can help you look in a sec. Camera pans over to LeBron, who's putting up a poster that says, Best of all time, just over his likeness. He does not have as many championships as Kobe. Kobe Bryant has been the preeminent player in this league for years. LeBron James is that now. Legacies won't be made or lost tonight. It's going to take time. It's funny how we lose sight of all the other facts and numbers and stats when assessing LeBron James. 
Because even though he hasn't matched up, he clearly can, should, and probably will. Cut. Three, two, one. LeBron James will be the best player in history, and time will justify that position. He needed help to win championships. Not much has been made of the fact that LeBron and his Cavaliers got swept by Duncan and the Spurs six years back. I think that there's a there's an underlying tacit acceptance of the notion that Michael Jordan didn't win until he got help. The Celtics and the Lakers, both as organizations, needed help. They had the one and two picks in the 1979 draft. They got that help in the form of Magic and Larry, who led their respective teams to the NBA Finals in that first season. LeBron James was not going to get the help he needed in Cleveland. That became an issue. There were bigger issues. Personnel left after him, and he needed to go where he could win. Miami was not just the best place for him to go. It was also a team that could use him as that last piece for a title. And now they stand on the brink of winning their second straight. So, the anticipation is brewing. What's going to happen? We don't know what's going to happen. We want to know what's going to happen, but we have to wait. And we're getting almost more wrapped up in this than the players themselves, which is a little bit psycho, but whatever. What do I think is going to happen? Let me say this. This is the Spurs title to lose, and I don't think that most people who follow basketball are ready to accept that, but this is the Spurs title to lose. If the Heat win tonight, they should feel lucky. And if the Spurs lose tonight, they should feel as if they let it all slip away. Because they almost won it a couple nights back. But this is one of those special moments. Just enjoy it for what it is. I'm looking forward to it. Mark Milton for Inside Sports.